Hey, y'all, Scott Horton here for WallStreetWindow.com. Mike Swanson knows his stuff. He made a killing running his own hedge fund and always gets out of the stock market before the government-generated bubbles pop, which is, by the way, what he's doing right now, selling all his stocks and betting on gold and commodities. Sign up at WallStreetWindow.com and get real-time updates from Mike on all his market moves. It's hard to know how to protect your savings and earn a good return in an economy like this. Mike Swanson can help. Follow along on paper and see for yourself. WallStreetWindow.com All right, you guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Scott Horton. Next up is Jim Loeb from Interpress Service, Washington Bureau Chief for Interpress Service. That's IPSnews.net, IPSnews.net. And, of course, they run the great Gareth Porter and a lot of other great reporters there. Uh, Welcome back to the show. Jim, how are you? Okay, how are you? I'm doing good. Appreciate you joining us today on the show. So uh, the news is that Netanyahu is coming to town. He's going to give a speech in Washington, D.C. to uh, the Congress. Uh, He's been invited by the House Speaker, uh, John Boehner. And uh, what's the controversy? He gives speeches to Congress all the time, right? Well, this would be his third speech uh, to a joint session if, in fact, it takes place. Um, Well, the controversy is that uh, no normal procedures were followed with respect to the invitation uh, that was sent and presumably accepted. Um, Nobody knows exactly who initiated uh, the idea of inviting him. But in any case, Boehner failed to consult with the minority, um, which is normal practice when a foreign uh, um, leader is invited to address the Congress. So the minority didn't know, and the minority in, in Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid are very angry about it. And uh, and the Israeli ambassador or the Israeli government did not consult with the State Department or the White House in advance. In other words, this was all done in order to get around uh, um, the administration and uh, Democrats who were considered loyal to the administration. It was a very unilateral move on both uh, the part of uh, Speaker Boehner and very possibly Senator McConnell, who seems also to have been involved, uh, and uh, Bibi Netanyahu and uh, his ambassador here, Ron Dermer. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the the substance of the speech will be Congress do everything you can to stop the president from succeeding in his nuclear negotiation, even though it's Israel is the driving force behind why America has this policy in the first place to assure that Iran never makes nukes. Um, I mean, obviously it's the American interest as well, but it's the Israeli, uh, the Netanyahu government's obsession that Iran be prevented from nuclear weapons technology. So, um, I guess that's why you call the article chutzpah squared. Uh. Well, squared in the sense that that there were um, two <laughs> that it, it involved both at least uh, uh, BB that is BB's nickname uh, or Netanyahu's nickname in Israel and uh, and Boehner um, at the very least. So uh, no, it just took extraordinary chutzpah for the, for Boehner to make this invitation without consultation and for uh, Netanyahu apparently to encourage it and ultimately it appears accept it. Although the original date was uh, for early February, I guess in some kind of effort to pacify uh, those who were very critical within the administration. And I would say that the administration is extremely angry about this. Uh, They pushed it back to the APAC conference in early March. But that's, of course, just two weeks before the Israeli elections, uh, which is why, which is the reason the administration says that no senior administration official will meet with uh, with Netanyahu if and when he he comes uh, during the APAC conference, uh, because they don't want to influence the results of a foreign election that mm-hmm. would be considered undue undue foreign interference. Mm-hmm. And now, so there was a leak, if I understand it right, there was a leak directly from the administration to Haaretz, seemed like an official one, um, which is it's interesting that they put it right in the Israeli liberal daily that the president had called Netanyahu and told him to back off of his uh, pushing Congress to push these sanctions. Is that right? Is that your understanding? Well, yeah, I mean, there's been, I mean, the administration has tried to work with Netanyahu and has warned him repeatedly that it's not helpful 
uh, for him to try to sabotage the negotiations, um, and is and is taken very and his attempts to do so are taken very seriously here. Um, I think what's also really important is that the Israeli kind of national security establishment um, in the institution of its intelligence community uh, also agrees with the administration's analysis, which is that if we get additional sanctions legislation of the kind that Netanyahu and Boehner are pushing for, uh, it's going to blow up the P5 plus one negotiations. Um, and uh, they apparently conveyed this to a congressional delegation that was visiting Israel um, uh, last week, and that leaked out as well. And then the head of Mossad was obviously pressed by Netanyahu to issue a kind of public retraction, saying, "Well, we, we you know, we're not saying that they're going to blow up the negotiations." Or, and, and uh, uh, we we do feel that pressure is really important, and so on and so forth. Well, it seemed like actually, didn't it? If if I read it right, the walking back was more hilarious than Mossad throwing Netanyahu under the bus in the first place. Because what they said was, yeah, we did say that the sanctions would wreck the negotiations, but we want to wreck the negotiations. The Israelis. Well, are- they, they didn't say. Yes, that is correct. They said that they had used the expression that was quoted uh, by Haaretz. But they said, but then they thought that the negotiations would resume under better circumstances. Right. That is, that the the Iranians would not walk away definitively or Oh, okay, forever. not completely destroy them and start them over again. Right, but... it's just a matter of, like, shocking the negotiations and then and then resuming them uh, in, a, in, a, in a better situation oh, okay. as That's far as Israel was concerned. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, none of this can be believed with great seriousness. <laughs> What can be believed is that the national security establishment in Israel is very, I think, upset with with Netanyahu and what Netanyahu is doing. And frankly, they should be, because, of course, at the same time that that Boehner announced this invitation, the foreign ministers of France, Britain and Germany, that is our closest allies in Western Europe and in NATO, as well as the foreign minister of the European Union, were publishing an op-ed in the Washington Post that said Congress should not mess this situation up. And so now you have this very strange situation where you have not just Obama, but also our traditional NATO allies lined up telling Congress and the Republicans, don't screw this up, uh, against Boehner... (laughs) The Speaker of the House, McConnell, the Majority Leader in the Senate, and Netanyahu. The um, of a foreign and country. and it, the idea is okay. So who who are the Republicans going to choose to listen to? Our traditional they don't like Obama, granted, but are they going to listen to our traditional NATO allies, or do they consider our alliance with Israel to be more important? And with Netanyahu in particular, because it's not the national security establishment of Israel, it's. Bibi Netanyahu. So who are they going to? Who who are Republicans going to line up with here? Yeah. That's that's one of the really interesting questions that's been posed by this situation, and which I think Netanyahu and the others didn't really, and certainly Boehner didn't fully understand or anticipate. Right. Well, before the audience places all their bets, I'll point out this very important paragraph in your piece today. It's the spotlight on antiwar.com, y'all. You can find it. Um, where you talk about some Republicans are, quote, rethinking their position. Boy, you know, I've been told some substantive things, and I think maybe it's time to back off these sanctions. So that's a good sign, huh? Yeah, and also, as I think I said in the same post, which I think is really important, is it puts um, the the major Jewish or mainstream organizations, which almost always back the Israeli government, in an extremely difficult position because they want to hand, uh, to hold on to their image as being bipartisan and as working with Democrats, and even more with Democrats than with Republicans. But now you have a situation where you've got the Republican leadership in Congress um, pulling this stunt off with the, the Prime Minister of Israel. And I think that puts them in an extremely invidious position, because if they want to retain their bipartisan image... They can't be seen as being entirely as complicit with this with this uh, 
maneuver. Right. Yep, very interesting to see how it'll play out. In fact, I think it's very interesting that it's Josh Rogan and Eli Lake who broke the big story about Mossad throwing um, uh, the, yeah, I agree with the you. bus there, in fact, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah, I think that's very... That, that that's that's very uh, in some ways it's very ironic because Eli in particular you know is very close to the neoconservatives mm-hmm. and I think it's people like Crystal who 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 dreamt up this little scheme this little maneuver and uh, yet um, he has some integrity and or uh, and he's a good journalist and you know he called it like he was told basically which is this is a terrible idea. Yeah. Either that or he's closer to Mossad even than the Israeli prime minister's <laughs> office. Well, I, yeah. Oh, that's an I old don't... joke for people who used to read Eli back in 02 and 03 when he <laughs> lied us into war with Iraq. But anyway. Um, well, and his tenure was the New York Sun and so on. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Listen, this has been such a great interview. Thank you so much for your time on the show today, Jim. Oh, I not at all. Uh, sorry, I have to leave you now. No, no, it's fine. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, so that's the great Jim Loeb. He's at loblog.com, like your earlobe, loblog.com. And, of course, he's the Washington Bureau Chief for Interpress Service at ipsnews.net. Hey, Al Scott here for MyHeroesThink.com. They sell beautiful seven-inch busts of libertarian heroes, Ludwig von Mises, Murray Rothbard, Ron Paul, and Harry Brown. These finely crafted statues from MyHeroesThink.com make excellent decorations for your desktop at work, bookends for your shelves, or gifts for that special individualist in your life. They're also all available in colors now, too. Of course, gold, silver, or bronze. Coming soon, Hayek, Hazlitt, Carlin. Use promo code Scott Horton and save $5 at MyHeroesThink.com. Hey, Al Scott Horton here. It's always safe to say that one should keep at least some of your savings in precious metals as a hedge against inflation. And if this economy ever does heat back up and the banks start expanding credit, rising prices could make metals a very profitable bet. Since 1977, Robertson Roberts Brokerage, Inc. has been helping people buy and sell gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. And they do it well. They're fast, reliable, and trusted for more than 35 years. And they take Bitcoin. Call Robertson Roberts at 1-800-874-9760 or stop by rrbi.co.